Now you are probably wondering why I am playing this video for you, but I can't really say. It will become obvious in time, but please listen to me now. It's exceedingly important you do exactly as I say. And I'm sorry to ask you of this, but you have Starting off the news this week, Boeing unveiled its current plans for a lunar lander that it will propose to NASA in a bid to return humans to the moon in 2024. NASA's planned program to the moon is called Artemis, and one of its primary aims is to get to the moon using fewer steps. NASA plans to achieve this by increasing the amount of launches per mission and transporting hardware separately. While NASA has said it prefers a lander to have three stages, Boeing's design only has two, one ascent module and one descent module. This would eliminate the need for an orbital tug, which is the third stage that NASA suggested. In other news, the Bloodhound supersonic car reached its highest speed yet in a test on the Haxine Pan in South Africa. The vehicle will eventually be fitted with a rocket to power its forward velocity, but for now is using a jet engine from a Eurofighter Typhoon. It reached 501 miles per hour, or 806 kilometers per hour, and seeks to eventually not only break the current record of 763 miles per hour, but the sound barrier and the 1000 mile per hour mark. The car was originally supposed to run in 2014, but after many setbacks both technologically and financially, the original project had to be bought out by a new company, who now planned to take the land speed record in 2020. In paleontology news this week, we welcome yet another new genus and species of dinosaur from China. This time, a Neonithiscian, which has been named Sanchosaurus modaushensis. Originating from rocks dating back to the Middle Jurassic, this dinosaur has been placed as a basal Neonithician and identified as unique from other members of this group by a variety of skeletal features. This also makes this species the oldest record of a Neonithician in Asia, extending back their record in this part of the world by millions of years. Also this week, a very interesting and important study has been published in Nature Scientific Reports, challenging what we understand about reconstructing the colours of extinct animals. As many of you probably know, in recent years there have been some amazing discoveries about the life appearance of prehistoric animals, including the realisation that by looking at the shapes of preserved melanosomes, organelles that contain pigments, in the hairs and feathers of well-preserved fossils, a sense of what colour the creatures would have been can be determined. However, in this new study, the soft tissue head crest of the pterosaur Tupandactylus was analysed, chemically characterising the melanin content of the preserved melanosomes to reveal that there was definitely eumelin present, the pigment responsible for black to dark brown colours. But following scanning electron microscopy and statistical analyses, it was found that preserved eumelanin containing melanosomes could not be differentiated from organelles in living animals containing pheomelanin, the pigment mostly responsible for lighter red colours. So the study concludes that based on these realisations, the colour of extinct animals is probably not so straightforward when it's just established on examining the shapes of preserved melanosomes, and much more caution is needed to properly determine the true colour. That's the end of 7 Days of Science this week. I do hope you enjoyed it and feel free to... That was a really short episode. Was it a really short episode? I think it was a really short episode. I'm not sure though. Because I've only narrated it, I haven't actually edited it. So for all I know, it could be a 10 minute episode of 7 Days of Science. But it's probably not. At this point, I'm rambling to put off having to edit what I've just recorded. Um, so... See you on Sunday. <laughs>